That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Wildcat. It's the first documentary feature from Trevor Frost and Melissa Lesh, which premiered at the 2022 Telluride Film Festival. Uh, it's being released theatrically, courtesy of Amazon, on December 21st, 2022, before it will be available to stream December 30th. I thought this was a very interesting documentary that led to a lot of interesting conversation. Definitely wasn't what uh, I think either of us thought no. it would be based on the description of it and uh, the few marketing stills I'd seen. Well, the description, one description you read said like a guy goes to the Amazon to kill himself. But the one I had read was basically about this guy who's like, like we see him raising like an ocelot. But it's much more than that. So we follow this guy named Harry, who is in his early 20s. He's a veteran. Who, British. A British veteran who we're told suffers from PTSD and depression. And he goes to the Amazon. That one description saying he went to kill himself, I don't recall that being explicitly. I don't know that it was. I, I know that he was having some difficulties and he uh, found this woman. I don't know that it was like in the middle of the Peruvian Amazon, but. But he ends up uh, joining this woman who's running a. Um, like nonprofit that's like carnivore rescue. Mm -hmm. And immediately we see that a baby ocelot is brought to them and Harry is raising it with the idea that he will um, return it to the wild. And that little ocelot is named Khan. And within the first like 20 minutes, Khan gets shot by a hunter and killed. So that is like a quick laugh I wasn't expecting. Of course, Harry's very upset about it. We see he become very attached to it, which I think a lot of the feelings we see seem elevated, but considering his mental health is not a surprise. Mm -hmm. Then they get another baby ocelot who they name Keanu. And we see him raise, for the bulk of the documentary, sort of raise this ocelot for the 18 months required to release it. Mm -hmm. But during that time, we see his mental health like like go up and down. We see him self harm. We see that he's sort of romantically involved with Samantha. With Samantha. Mm -hmm. Then um, he has a very hard time letting Keanu go. Of of course he has no experience doing this, so I don't think he was prepared. But during that process, Samantha realizes that maybe she, like they have boundary issues and she can't really handle his issues. So she ends up going back to Seattle to finish her PhD. Harry stays, releases Keanu, and then goes back home. And then we see that back home with his family, he's doing a little bit better. And then the documentary ends with him deciding to work for another non volunteer for another nonprofit in Ecuador, mm -hmm. like with amphibians. And reptiles. And re reptiles. The end. Um, yeah, I thought it was very interesting watching this young man it, it's interesting and also frustrating. Yes. Uh, because It's like, you know, when you're uh, objectively looking at any person's relationship and you're like, oh my God, they're doing all these things wrong. And you can see very quickly that there are some boundary issues here between Samantha, who's also, you know, a very impressive young woman, but also very young. And clearly, I think, had an attraction, maybe a, a savior complex for this young man. And then, you know, once you cross certain boundaries, you know, once it's evident within this film that they're romantically involved, I'm like, oh, I, I already know where this is going to go. Some of the things that I thought were a little weak are, we get like a little background on Samantha and about how her dad was very abusive emotionally and physically and how that might well, he's an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I feel like that felt like an aside, but it's such it, a serious topic mm -hmm. that it kind of felt like, oh, and, and then they only talk about it like once briefly, sort of in the beginning, and then it, and then it's reintroduced towards the end. I feel like she needed a little more time. She, I think she did she need and deserve more time, but it, I think it was a way for the filmmakers trying to establish like, well, you know, maybe this is why she's making some of these choices because she also comes to the epiphany, you know, she reflects on maybe the mistake she made with Harry as, as being um, copying what happened to her as a child and bringing that, like as, as we all do. Sure. And, and kind of as you grow, kind of realizing how to divorce yourself or modify the toxic behavior that we're all, we've all adopted in some shape, way, or form. I also feel like 
a lot of the footage we're seeing in the documentary is like self-recorded. So I'm always a little dubious about, sure. particularly Harry, like he's recording himself having these like emotional breakdowns. It just seems kind of like, are you performing? Or then there's a moment when Samantha calls the suicide prevention hotline. And I, you know, it's like she's recording herself doing it. So I, I, I kind of felt like, is she, is she calling because she knows she's making a documentary? I don't, not think she cared about him but of course anytime someone's being recorded their oh, motivation is in question sure but I, I there there's this rawness to both well especially harry that i feel like i i think he's really trying to work through some stuff and even if he sure. is there's a performative aspect of it when you're in i think that headspace it's that the, that's they're still very authentic Authentic. I think there was a lot of tension too because Harry is just out in this for like he is out here in this rainforest, like in the dark with night vision, whatever on, and we see like caimans and big cats and snakes, poisonous things, and he's just roaming around like uh -huh. no big deal, trying to teach the cat how to eat. So there were many moments when I was very tense watching it. So you know, there's that too, which I think is done well. But then I have to remember that this guy like fought in combat, so his you know tolerance for fear is much higher than my own. But, but it, it, and it's clear also from the onset that there are things he experienced in uh, combat that there there are traumas that he really needs help working through that yeah. aren't going to happen isolated in the jungle. No, and, and I think in light of like finding out that uh, Twitch, the gentleman who was on the Ellen Show committing suicide mm -hmm. and just like when witnessing someone who needs help and i think it's like you know every celebrity is on social media talking about reach out to people and it's like but who who some people don't feel like they can talk to people or you know some yeah, of us aren't of, equipped to deal with that and part of the problem is not being able to vocalize right uh, or wanting to at a certain point it just sounds so simple like sitting in the comfort of your own home to judge people and give advice and it's like well you know, wit witnessing someone's experience is so more, so much more complex than just like call a number. And so, uh, you know, I, I I think it's very brave for this person to put this out there into the world. And it does, he does feel it does feel very raw. And for, for so, I appreciated that. And I hope he's doing well today. Same. Uh, it, I I think where I would get more emotional watching this was when his family comes to visit. Oh, yes. Uh, especially his younger brother. I thought that was, yeah, his younger brother clearly loves his big brother. But and, when he, and even the dad. And the dad, well... Yeah, all, all the family clearly loves their son. When brother. Harry decides to go back to the UK, he doesn't tell them. He just kind of surprises them and they're about to eat... A pizza hut. A pizza hut with a, a, another couple it looks like that his parents are friends with. And, you know, the genuine emotions that spring forth, like with the dad, especially the little... The yeah, brother, it was sweet. It's very sweet. But I would recommend it if it's on Amazon Prime. You said uh, it will be. It's, it, it's worth a watch. First. You know, it reminded me. I know I've referenced Born Free before, which I know you haven't seen. I, I, I that would love to get you to watch that sometime. That's a favorite from my childhood. But also, Gorillas in the Mist, right? Where Diane Fossey is this kind of this this fiercely intelligent, resilient um, woman who, in isolation, is kind of led down a dark path, uh, right? Mm -hmm. in the jungles of Rwanda in that particular instance, but how easily, or Grizzly Man even a little bit too, we can become overly connected with the environment uh, because we're making up for so many things that we can't get from human connections. But uh, yeah, also, again, again, there's a lot to talk about. But. Yeah, and also Harry's a good-looking kid and never has a shirt on, so if that's enough to get you to watch it, I would say do that too. But it's, it's definitely worth the watch. Like uh, Timote from my taste. Uh, but. Well... What would you give it? Uh, three. I would give it three and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>